So in this video, we're going to expand our understanding of Coulomb's Law by looking at three specific examples. All three of them are in your reading packet, and uh, you should look through them and, and complete them as we complete them in the video. Here we go. So we talked really briefly at the end of the last video about this superposition principle, which really is that the resultant force on a charge is the vector sum of the forces exerted on it by other charges. So in this first example here, we have three charged particles that are arranged in a, in a line, a one-dimensional line. And we want to calculate the net electrostatic force on particle three due to the other two charges. So we've got a negative charge here, we've got a positive charge here, and a negative charge here. And we want to figure out the net force on that third negative charge. So because these are forces, we can, you know, we can draw pretty much a, a free body diagram for them. Okay, so if we look at that third charge, we know that the force from this charge on this charge will be an attractive force. So we're going to we're going to uh, draw our vector arrow toward it, showing that we've got force of 2 on 3 is an attractive force. Then there's force uh, from charge 1 on charge 3 that they're like charges, so it will be a repelling force. And it's further away, so it should be a little less in magnitude for force 1 on 3. Okay, so all we need to do with this is use Coulomb's Law to figure out force 2 on 3 and force 1 on 3, and then add them using uh, vector addition. Okay, so let's see what this looks like first with force 1 on 3. Okay, so using Coulomb's Law, we see that we've got uh, charge 1 and charge 3. So we've got Q1 and Q3 here, and they're a distance of 0.5 meters apart. Okay, and the magnitude of charge one is this eight micro columns. This mu right there is micro, so it's times 10 to the negative six. And Q3 is four micro columns, so it's times 10 to the negative six. And both of these are negative charges. And we work this out, and this ends up being 1.15 newtons to the right. Okay, so let's go ahead then and take a look at force of two on three. Okay, so force 2 on 3 ends up being this negative 2.7 newtons. Now, all that negative means is that it is an attractive force between the charges of Q2 and Q3. So that points to the left. So then all we have to do to find our net force is to add these as vectors. And we get a net force of negative 1.60 newtons. So that is to the left. which is just what we predicted in our free body diagram. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. Okay, so in this example, we want to calculate the net charge on Q3 due to charges Q1 and Q2. The difference in this one is now we are looking at two dimensions. So that's gonna change our free body diagram just a little bit. When we look at Q3, that we're looking at the forces on Q3, we see that Q2 is a positive charge. Q3 is also a positive charge. So we end up with a force that's going to be directed away from Q2. For force 1 on 3, though, that because uh, Q3 is a positive charge and Q1 is a negative charge, that's going to be an attractive force. So force 1 on 3 will be drawn this way. So a simplified free body diagram would look like this here, where we've got force 1 on 3, force 2 on 3, and using our potent geometry skills, we'll be able to figure out easily using that, this drawing over here that this is a 60 degree angle and this is a 30 degree angle. Okay, so the first thing to do in this example is going to be to use Coulomb's Law to figure out the magnitude, the overall magnitude of both for, uh, force 1 on 3 and 2 on 3. Let's start with force 2 on 3. Okay, so applying Coulomb's law to force 2 on 3 then ends up giving us a magnitude of 325 newtons in the upward direction. Okay, so that's that force acting on charge 3. So now we have to take a look at the next, next force. Okay, so when we do that, we end up with force 1 on 3 being this negative 139.75 newtons. Now, all this negative means is that it, it's an attractive force. So that force is be, between uh, charge 1 and 3 is directed along a line between the two of them. 
Now from looking at our free body diagram, we can see that force one on three has an angle. So we have to resolve force one on three into its vector components before we can continue. So to do that, we have to have force one on three in the x direction, and we're gonna use force one on three and a trig function cosine times the angle. Now remember that negative sign in force one on three is simply directional. So we're, we're looking at really the absolute value then of that force to figure out the x component. And we end up with 121 newtons directed to the right, which we can see makes sense from our free body diagram. OK, so now we have to apply our trig functions then to find our y component of F13. And when we do that, we'll use sine of the angle and we get a 69.875 newtons in the downward direction. OK, so a redrawing of our free body diagram will show us that we've got, here's our force 2 on 3, that's the 325 newtons up. We have force 1 on 3x directed to the right with a uh, magnitude of 121 newtons. And we have force 1, 3y directed downward with a magnitude of 69.875 newtons. So now the thing to do is to add up all of these forces in the x direction and all the forces in the y direction. And then Pythagorize those to find our resultant force. Okay, so the only force that's acting in the x direction is just the x component of uh, force 1 on 3. So that's 121 newtons to the right. In our y direction, we've got force F2 on 3 and the y component of force 1 on 3, which is a downward direction, so it's negative. And this ends up giving us then a net force in the y direction of 255.13 newtons directed upward. So now the forces on this uh, charge look like this. These are our net force in the x direction, our net force in the y direction. And all we have to do at this point at this, with this is Pythagorize them. And of course, to Pythagorize simply means to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve. We end up with 282.4 newtons. And using the inverse tangent function was going to show us then that this would be at an angle of 65 degrees above that x-axis. Okay, so we've got one final example to look at then. So in this example, we have two 25 gram metal spheres that have identical positive charges. They hang down from a light string that's 32 centimeters long and attached to the ceiling. If the angle, the strings form with the vertical is seven degrees, then what is the magnitude of the charges? Okay, so the first thing to do in this example is to take a look at the geometry of the thing, okay? So if we look at just one of those spheres, hangs along this string here, and here's the sphere down here, we have a seven degree angle up here. Using trig, we can figure out that the distance from the center line between the two spheres to a sphere is 3.9 centimeters. The distance between the spheres then is double this, so it's 7.8 centimeters. So our r, our distance that we're going to use in our, Pythag in our uh, Coulomb's law, will be this 7.8 centimeters. Okay, so let's take a look at a free body diagram of the forces on one of these spheres. Okay, so here's a free body diagram for the left-hand sphere. We've got a tension from the string. We've got a weight from a gravitational field. And we've got the electric force from the other sphere. Using our analysis of the geometry of the thing, we figure that this angle here is uh, 83 degrees. So at this point, make sure that you understand how this all works out and how this all works out before continuing on with viewing this, ex this example. Okay, so we know that this situation is uh, using forces so we can employ Newton's laws to this situation. In this, we've got a net force in the x direction of zero. These two spheres are just hanging there. They're in equilibrium, so there's no net force on either sphere, see? So we're gonna look in the x direction, and we're also gonna look in the y direction. So first, with the x direction, we've got tension in the x direction, and we've got that electric force, both equals zero. 
Pulling this out further, then we have T cosine angle minus that electric force equals zero. Now we run into a problem with this because we don't know what our tension is. So we have to look at the y direction. So in our y direction, then we have the tension in the y direction and the weight. So pulling this out further, this will be T sine theta minus mg equals zero. So now that we have two equations with an unknown, we can solve for that unknown in one of those equations and substitute it into the other. Using the y component, using the y direction to find the tension then, we can substitute that into the tension in the x direction. And we get this here. We've got mg over sine theta times cosine theta minus the, uh, that electric force is equal to zero. Okay. Solving then for that electric force, we end up with uh, that electric force being 0 0.030 newtons. Okay, so we've used Newton's laws to figure out the size, the magnitude of that electric force. Now we can use Coulomb's law to figure out the magnitude of the charge. Now, as we're told in the problem, the charges are of equal size, right? So our Coulomb's law can just become q squared, kq squared over r squared, because both of those charges are equal. So applying Coulomb's law then to this, we end up with a charge of 1.42 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs on each of those metal spheres. Okay, so those are three examples using Coulomb's law then that uh, we can take a look at. We're going to be doing uh, activities that will uh, be very similar to this particular problem uh, in class. See you then.